Okay, so um, really I'm, I'm talking from a more of a perspective now of an observer and the value of cameras um, in, in, or two observers um, while, while they at sea. So I think, as I've said here, the data requirements for fisheries observer programs are quite complex and difficulties uh, are often associated uh, with overloaded demands for accurate data and near real-time reporting, which adds strain to the observers, especially in some of their more delicate tasks uh, that they require to do. Um, and the result is that the principal objective of most at -sea observer programs are taking a backseat. Also, as observers are required to monitor and report more and more uh, on some compliance issues uh, with respect to, to various conservation and management measures of RFMOs. So in this respect, and as we've seen now in, in some of the presentations up to now, automatic electronic monitoring and enhanced electronic sampling has the potential to save observers time and remove them from situations that are operationally unsafe and scenarios where they are called on to exceed their independent uh, sampling mandate. Let me just, uh, I was going to see if this thing is going to change. Um, Why won't this change going on? Let's try. There we are. So essentially, observers, uh, cameras are not, are not new uh, in the observers' uh, toolkit. Um, and they've been used for many years uh, for most programs for taking pictures of various species and under situations. And, you know, if I look at the uh, Camilla Observer Program. Uh, photographing tag returns has been a requirement for a long time now, uh, and that especially to verify uh, against recorded uh, tag return numbers. And this has proved itself over and over again uh, up, up to now. But if we start looking at the, um, at the more modern cameras, uh, and, the, and the rapid advance in new technology, which revolves both around imagery and machine learning and artificial intelligence. It makes it possible now for cameras to take over large chunks of monotonous tasks. Um, you know, things like lion hauling, uh, which can be rewatched at a high speed and in more safety and, and comfort. And, and I will come back to uh, some of the, the safety aspects. But in short, camera time can save on human time that can then be reinvested in tasks where cameras are less efficient. So if we look a little bit now at electronic sampling versus electronic monitoring, um, and just to give you an example here of what an observer is expected to spend many hours of his day out at sea. If we look at line hauling, at the line hauling example, machine learning can pick up or flag events and draw attention to these, only showing the viewer sections of the line where fish come up. The observer can then validate species ID, confirm events that are flagged, and the viewer also has the power to stop, rewind, fast forward, and zoom in and save clips for second opinions. And I think what we've also seen now is we can get to the point where species recognition can be such that an entire lion hall can be monitored electronically, recording all the species uh, coming up. So cameras via remote sensing can also con be connected to a vessel's hydraulics, linked to navigation equipment such as GPS location, and record mechanical operations, time, position, together with video imaging. And it is this route that we envisage cameras and electronic monitoring to go forward as an aid to observers. Foreseeably, we can get to the point where electronic monitoring could supplant 
a significant percentage of the observer's time, time that can also then be reinvest, reinvested in more specific uh, biological sampling. To follow on on this, electronic sampling also provides the observer with assistance. For example, through an electronic measuring board or scale uh, to automatically record fish length and weight, this saves time on data transcription and reduces human error and supports support that essentially enhances the overall uh, data collection and the quality of data that is collected. Whereas electronic monitoring and remote sensing can independently provide images and information in settings that have more a compliance factor and safety issue. For example, for most RFMOs require, uh, most RFMOs where long line fishing takes place, they require the vessels to fly one or two birds carrying devices, Victoria lines, especially in the higher latitudes. And these lines are really only effective if deployed in terms of the specifications, correct length, attachment height, toad object. Setting also often takes place at night and observers are not always or cannot always be present throughout the set to verify that the Toria line is deployed correctly and working effectively. It is also often a very dangerous situation in adverse conditions of sea and ice. And I'm going, to, I'm going to be honest here, there are situations where observers have actually been in life-threatening situations, monitoring um, setting operations, which to a large extent is a compliance issue. In, in essence, a simple Tory line tension device, which switches on automatically once the line is deployed, records date, time, tension, verifies the line is automatic, is effective, um, is automatically once, once the line is deployed. So basically, as soon as the line is deployed, all these parameters are, can, are, are recorded. And from a set of known parameters, it will also record if the line uh, is correctly deployed, correct length is out and tow device, et cetera, et cetera. This saves observer time and also is, is, is huge, a, a safety factor. Uh, for the observer. So if we look now at electronic monitoring more in a compliance aspect, um, a scientific observer should not be a compliance officer. And I think this is always uh, a, an issue that we are faced when placing observers on board. However, they have increasingly become tools for compliance in fisheries manage management. Fisheries managers need to acknowledge that observers currently play a huge role in compliance. They cannot sidestep this and all of the associated risks that it creates for the observers. EM can to a large extent resolve uh, the understated reality that observers do have this compliance role. As I've just mentioned, monitoring setting operations. The result of compliance issues is that the independence of observers can be compromised. There will always be an opportunity to look away. Often it has nothing to do with the integrity of the observer or even the fishing operation, and more to do with the relationships on board, maintaining a safe and congenial living situation for observers when they're out at sea, sometimes on board a vessel up to six months. So essentially the electronic monitoring can increase monitoring from a zero level up to 100% or 200% in cases where human and electronic monitoring work together. It can also have a significant advantage on smaller vessels, which are generally less safe and suitable for accommodating observers, taking away, in some cases, the need to remove a crew, uh, to a crew member to accommodate the observer. And if I give you an example of a fishery in South Africa, our tuna pole uh, fishery, where crew work in pairs um, to try and take off one crew to accommodate the observer seriously impacts the operation of the vessel. And the result is that these vessels seldom, if ever, take observers, and there is to date little or no recorded at sea monitoring in this, in this fishery. Okay, 
I'm going to give another case study uh, of a fishery here in South Africa, which also is extremely reluctant to take observers, and that's a, a, our small scale, our small pelagic persane fishery. And this is a fishery that is ideal, ideally situated for electronic monitoring. By putting remote sensing uh, um, onto the equipment, the hydraulics like the triplex, the net stacker, and the fish pump, together with cameras, it would be able to provide an indication of the catch size from the strain profile on the equipment while hauling, and then the time to actually pump out the net. And just to look at this in reality, we can see that by, by building out an AI system onto all of these equipment and then onto the pump and monitoring uh, the volume of fish that are pumped out. The cameras used in conjunction could provide information on catch composition and even size composition. A flag would be raised if there was a deviation from the expected parameters that might indicate fish were discarded for any reason. And this is a major compliance factor in this fishery. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I was actually hoping that this would more set the, the scene for uh, discussion and questions. And yeah, thanks a lot uh, for, for those of you who have listened so far.